You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts, Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionFit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the option block All right, everybody. That music means we are back. We are powering through another Thursday block of shows here. You know, no rest for the wicked. No rest for my voice. If you heard the shows yesterday, you know I'm hurting. I got a little bit of something from uh, from STA and all my travels last week. Uh, three shows yesterday, two more today. No rest for the wicked. Uh, no rest for the voice. But I will be powering through with a bag of lozenges by my side. I'll be chowing on those throughout the entirety of both shows today so if you hear long pauses it's because i'm just racked by coughing but other than that i should be functional for most of the shows here listeners of course welcome that rousing intro welcome to the option block episode two for the week the thursday edition hope you're having a good trading week out there of course a lot of fun hitting the network this week great pro q and a's and also early access to a lot of my chats uh, that I had last week at STA, including on Otherwise Did Last Night with the folks over there at Altso, a.k.a. A Leg to Stand On, a great charity providing prosthetics to children in the developing world. So uh, check that one out. That'll be hitting the network pretty soon as well. If you want to get early access to all that stuff, you want to get access to pro Q&As and everything else, options oddities, the optionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more as we go around the horn and see who's joining us today. First, let's go out to the Flowmaster, this time not joining us from SIBO East, but actually joining us from SIBO proper right down the street. I know that because I was supposed to go down there today, listeners, and record the show right above the trading floor. would have been cool for you folks, but 
Uh, I didn't want to. A, I'm not feeling up to going anywhere. I could pretty, pretty much barely stand at the microphone. Maybe even when I'm not talking, I might sit down for a little bit, which is rare. But also, I don't want to infect the Flowmaster. That's the kind of guy I am. Mr. Flowmaster, glad you can make it to Chi-Town right down the street. What brings you to our fair city, sir? Uh, so, yeah, I'm in the mothership. I actually got to do a uh, presentation to uh, a bunch of professionals from uh, Japan yesterday, which included a translator. It was kind of fun. And then today, actually, we had a Korean delegation in the office. So... Uh, it's been a big week for my Asian outreach uh, work, and um, I actually am going to head over to the to the SIBO uh, trading floor this afternoon to say hello to a few people. Uh, it's a beautiful week to be in Chicago, that's for sure. Koreans, you crunching some Cosby flow? Is that the new newest addition to your flow? All the Cosby. <laughs> We, we were comparing. I was asking the audience who had traded U.S. products and who had traded uh, local products, and there was a little mix. But almost everybody in the room had had actually traded an Apple option at some point. So that was kind of there interesting. There you go. Apple, the great equalizer across nations out there, listeners. As we keep on rolling out to the hinterlands of Chicago, he's moving all over the place today as well. But uh, he is joining us from the hinterlands of Chicago, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Manager. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the show to you as well. Always a pleasure to be here, and it is a beautiful day out here in sunny, scenic St. Charles as well. Well, there we go. Two for two, and now let's go out to the uh, southern volatility mecca. I do believe they're dodging the hurricane. The hurricane's kind of coming, splitting the uprights right between him over there in Austin and Florida, kind of coming up right through the gulf there. So they should be good. No flooding, I don't think, in Houston, or I should say Austin this time. Uh, well, we are joined by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian. Uh, Mr. Meatball, welcome back to the show to you as well. Ah, good to be here. Sunny blue skies here in Austin, Texas. A uh, comfortable 80 degrees. Can't uh, can't really complain much. All right. Well, we'll see if we have any complaining to do about the markets because it is time for the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, welcome to the trading block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading. Uncle Mike probably has some stuff he wants to say in a little bit, even though we are not quite there anymore. But the market's still looking green right now, listeners, even if they are off their intraday highs here for the session and indeed flirting with a new all-time highs out there. So we're kind of still in this listless period for the market, it seems, post-Fed, everyone waiting for the next big catalyst to kind of move us in one direction or the other. As we're kicking off the show, most of the major indices were firmly in the green. Now they still are, but less so. S&P up about two-tenths of a percent. NASDAQ up about two-tenths of a percent. I believe NASDAQ was at one point up about a full percent. And the Dow up about half a percent right now. You know, let's let's pull up our old pal small caps, too, because why not? Small caps up three-quarters of a percent right now, listeners. And our old pal, Vix Cash, Got down to, I believe, about a, a 15 half earlier in the session. Let's see. How low did we go? Actually, no, earlier. Lower, 1520. Uh, and now uh, kind of uh, rallying off of that now to about 1560. Still down from the Monday show, down about four tenths of a point. And VVIX continuing its slow erosion down five points to a 90 even as we're kicking off the show. Let's go around the horn. Let's go the way we went. Let's start with uh, the Flowmaster. Uh, Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what's catching your eye out there in your newfound fascination with Cosby options? Uh, well, I'll tell you, I remember looking at Cosby options like uh, years back because the, the volume, I believe it was the most popular, uh, the highest volume product in the world oh, for a yeah. while. And Isn't it, it also like a, little... a, like a notional value of like three cents? It's a very small contract, but, right? Uh, it, it was a very small contract, and they ended up, they ended up kind of reverse splitting the multiplier uh, to kind of take a little bit of wind out of it, which is um, – it's very reminiscent of kind of what we've been seeing in the Indian, uh, the Nifty index options trading over there. Similar deal, very low notional contract and, and crazy high volume. Um, but no, you know what's really interesting to me is um, realized volatility has kind of fallen off a cliff. And I did I, I do a little daily straddle uh, run, similar to what Russell does actually. 
And if you actually, if you bought the At The Money Straddle and SPX for the last nine days in a row, uh, you were paying around $30 a day. Uh, I think on Fed Day, it was a little higher. It was actually 60. But so over the last nine days, you would have spent $280 to, to buy that straddle. Uh, you would have lost $180 doing that. So basically, the options have been overpriced for the close to close, well, the 935 a.m., uh, move into the close uh, very consistently, which is really kind of interesting, right? That's a long run of basically uh, the option pr premiums just being too high in terms of what the, the move ended up. Now, today might be a little different because at 935, we were kind of actually towards the highs and market has sold off a little bit. But um, it's just, I mean, basically for premium sellers that didn't get shaken out in uh, in early August, um, it's been a, a kind of a really great run. Um, so, I mean, now that, that simplifies things, that means we're ignoring kind of any of the intraday swings and there certainly have been some of those. Um, but really, you know, at the simplest kind of strategy, um, you know, not a lot of people have the appetite to be short an SPX straddle uncovered, but if you did it, you would have made some serious money in the last, uh, last nine days in a row. Just whacking away at straight at the money straddles and SPX. <laughs> that's a, that's a hardcore fellow or lady who's out there doing that. You can pop a few tums if that's your trading strategy, <laughs> listeners. But you did make some money. It's a hard way to make a living, but you can't do it. Uh, let's keep rolling. Let's go out now to the hinterlands of Chicago, uh, Mister Uncle Mike, sir. Well, what is catching your eye out there? And how many at the money SPX straddles are you blasting away at? Well, we'll get to that in a second. But before, we just have an exciting announcement to make that never before mm. in the history of the entire stock market has there ever been a better time to sell than today. Uh, new all-time highs today. And uh, it's always exciting when that happens in the S&P 500. And I got to say, I, I think I did do a short straddle on the S&P maybe 15 years ago. I, so I have done it, but um, can't say that's really in my uh, in my toolbox by any means. So, but I but I can say that I have done that before. Uh, but uh, with that being said, uh, we do have new all time highs in the stock market today, and uh, there's always the concern, of course, of are we at the top or are we going to continue to go higher? Uh, I really think that right now in markets like this, what I'm Really, I think the the trading play overall is hedged equity right now, because of the fact that if you want upside, you can get it, uh, but if you want protection from having being that guy that bought the top that nobody wants to be, uh, the put option is there for you with a VIX in the mid teens. It's not necessarily unreasonable, typically not unreasonable to just buy straight puts if you'd like. Uh, if they're still too expensive for your taste, of course, there's always put spreads. If that's the if that's uh, up your alley, whatever the case may be, and so I think that's where to go right now if you want to participate in this market. Then if not, you just want to sell all your winnings, if you will. Then uh, nothing wrong with that either. The other thing that is catching my eye right now uh, is silver. Uh, we are actually approaching the one year highs of silver again. Haven't quite broken through yet. Uh, just looking at SLV on uh, the on the screen. Uh, I'd like to see it get past 30 because I'd be interested to see what would hold it back if it could break through and get to new all-time highs again. Bonds have been relatively steady. They're not rallying like they were, but uh, for the time being, they're down from their highs, but uh, they're still up there. And I think it'll be interesting to see how they move now that the Fed is not being talked about 24-7. And that's what I'm seeing today. I don't know what's going on in the Tucson house, but we're still talking Fed 24-7 in the Longo house. How can you not? It's just the most, the most fascinating dinner party conversation. It really we, is. <laughs> as we go out now to the southern volatility mecca known as Austin. Mr. Mr. Meatball, sir, what's catching your eye out there today? Well, you know, I, I want to point out that uh, we're coming up to the end of the quarter and, um, you know, it's time to talk about some uh, some pretty big option positioning, and that is J.P. Morgan's quarterly hedge. Uh, they have on a – so every quarter, J.P. Morgan buys a put spread, and they sell calls to finance it. The calls they sell, I believe, are 5% out of the money. And it just so happened 
that where we are is, and I, and Henry stop me. I, I'm trying to remember the last time that we were kind of buttressing one of their positions as we approach the end of a quarter, but we um, actually kind of closed below it uh, on Friday or closed below it yesterday, gapped above it, and then immediately fell right back below that strike. So I think we've got a lot of market maker gamma trading around uh, where JP Morgan has that big hedge position on. So there, uh, JP Morgan's currently short, I believe, the 4750 strike about 44,000 times. Um, that So over the course of the day, um, the position that uh, the, the, the dealers are holding has uh, fluctuated plus or minus over um, up to 2 million deltas. Uh, which is when you th- is a huge amount of futures positioning. That's uh, what forty thousand S and P E mini futures that have kind of swung back and forth. So at at the at the at the gap open, um, you know, assuming obviously dealers are trading futures overnight and stuff like that. But at the open, if dealers did nothing overnight, they had about one and a half million futures to sell, and here we are at the lows. Uh, they would have to be buying back that entire one and a half million deltas that they were uh, that they sold overnight. So um, I think that forty seven fifty strike until J P Morgan rolls, and they're probably going to roll up to about the six thousand twenty five strike. Um, that's going to put a little bit of a ceiling in the overall market for the next couple of days, even with P C E, unless we get some sort of really um, market pushing news, news that's strong enough to actually overcome the amount of um, gamma hedging that's taking place around this 4750 strike. 47 half or 57 half for the 40, uh, 57 half, not 40. I was going to say, you know get, what I meant? Getting a lot of gamma out of, that, out of those 47 halves. Okay. Yeah, I got you. I 57 got you. half. Sorry. And that yeah, they're going to be rolling to the 60 quarters uh, based on where we're trading right now. Um, but that 57 and a half strike. I mean, it sticks out like a sore thumb on that SEP quarterly contract. You can see it. Um, I, I, I don't know, Henry. Can you remember the last time that they had a position that was like this close to where we're current, currently trading this close to expiration? Um, I mean, we don't like to single out customer positions. Um, I will say that positioning in this case you're exactly right in that if you look at the largest uh, open interest positions in that quarterly expiration, there's one at the top of the list, and and people really do know which structure is trading that. Um, I actually bought some 575 calls in XSP uh, at the beginning of the week uh, as I'm doing a demonstration for for uh, a retail brokerage group and wanted to kind of show how to use XSP and kind of uh, knowing that that there is some, um, you know, potential to kind of go to that, that, that large open interest position. That was kind of the motivation. I think there was a year end at the end of 2022 that, uh, blew through the strike if, if I remember right. Um, so I think unless it was 2023, but I think it was 2022. Um, so, uh, this is a, this is a position that is widely watched and, uh, followed and people certainly are, uh, you know, there's a lot of kind of game theory going on in terms of getting in front of it. But I do agree that if the market maker community is long that you kind of have a volatility dampening, uh, gamma effect, exactly as you said. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it was a 50 Delta call, um, you know, yesterday or just about, uh, and, you know, in that case, if the futures are, you know, one to one. Um, so, you know, and obviously, as we get into Monday is expiration, that's probably when we'll see that position rolled um, is expiration for that quarterly. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, big it's gone from today. It's gone from a, you know, yesterday it was a 46. It ballooned to about a 63. It's currently a 35. It, it is really moving around a lot. Those juicy, juicy deltas out there, listeners. Let's see if we can find some other juicy things in the market. Is it a juicy day overall? I say as I pop a lodgings. I'm going to power through all this data, listeners. Let's see if I can make it all the way through without collapsing into a fit of coughing. Let's see. Uh, Is it a banger day across? It's a weird one. It's a very weird one, listeners, because some areas are super hot. 
And then others, it's like they forgot to wake up today. <laughs> I would include Vix in that category to kick things off. Vix, 219,000 contracts only. We haven't seen it this sleepy in a while. Uh, the ADV is 923, so it's starting to tick back up, going in the right direction, back up north of a 900,000 again. But doesn't seem like today's going to get there anytime soon. There's a whole heck of a lot of nothing going up in Vix today, unless you're really excited about 37,000 of the Ox 16 puts. Uh, somebody's liking those, but outside of those today, uh, not a heck of a lot going up out there in Vixland today. Let's see, what do those go up? 30,000 for 17 cents. You like those listeners? That's today's big print in Vixland. Now, Spy looking a lot more robust. 5.13 million contracts on the tape. Uh, it's not quite a million, but pretty close. A decent amount more than what we usually see. Usually we see around about 4.3, 4.35. So about 5.15 on the tape for Spy. That's respectable. Uh, the ADB 7.83. Uh, the S, right around where we expect it. Usually we expect it 1.75. It is at 1.7 million right now. Actually, just ticked up. Now it's about 1.79. So if I re-rack it, there we go. Now we are pretty much a little bit north of where we expect it to be. The ADB, right around 3 million in the S. Uh, small caps, also doing about what we expect. 711,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, the ADV is 1.37 million, so pretty much halfway to its ADV, and then the Qs are just lighting it up out there today. Over 3 million already, 3.02 million on the tape for the Qs. The ADV, 3.83 million. So yeah, spoiler alert, probably going to get there today. Usually we expect about two and a quarter million, so the Qs looking surprisingly robust. And what else is surprisingly robust are the single names. It's been a while since we've seen a day that cost you north of 300,000 to break into the top 10, let alone close to 350. In fact, if I re-racked it right now, it probably would be about exactly 350. But 344 is what it costs you to break into the top 10 today. That is about 2x what we've been seeing of late. So today, a surprisingly heavy day on the single name front, which is kind of interesting. Also, we've got a nice mix of names in the top 10 today. It's not just your usuals. We got a few of those, obviously. But we got some uh, newcomers and just some old favorites making their way back into the top 10. Like number 10, 344,000 contracts. That gets you to our old pal, Mara. If you've been listening to the Crypto Rundown for a while, you know we've been talking about Mara on that show. This one's kind of been all over the place over the last year, up to 30, back down to about 15, up to 30 again, back down to about 15. Was hanging out close to the 15 level not too long ago, about 16 on the show on Monday, up about a buck and a half today to about 17 and a half right now. Good for 344,000 contracts. And the number 10 spot, number nine, the Amazonians, 190 and a half off a little over two bucks, about 210 or about 1% today. So they're coming for the Amazonians at number nine, 374,000 contracts. Uh, number eight, our old pal SMCI, man, they are taking a nice layer off the top today. 385 even off $73 or nearly 16% today for SMCI. Wow. Good for number eight, 444,000 contracts on the tape. Let's just look really quickly because I'm going to guess a lot of puts, but you never know. Yeah, the 400 puts, 19, almost 20,000 of those bad boys going up today. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> the number one most active contract in SMCI. They are coming for SMCI today. My goodness. Uh, number seven, keeping it in kind of the refreshing names out here. I've been talking about this one a little bit of late. This is Pin Duo Duo. Back on our radar today, number seven, 128.60, up 1465 or almost 13%. So a good day for good old Pin Duo Duo. Another one of our lenses into the Chinese market. We always talk about Baba, but Pin Duo Duo, another one on the Chinese e tail side. Number seven, 452,000 contracts. So putting up a lot of tape in PDD. What beat it? It's number six, AMD. 481,000 contracts, 164.90, up about 290 or nearly 2% today. Again, good for number six, 481,000. Keeping it in our A tech names with number five, it's the fruit company, Apple, 553,000 contracts on the tape. So pretty light volume for them, up about 70 cents. So trading 227 even on the day. So they've had, let's see, what kind of range have they had today? 225, 40 was their low, 228 half was the high so 310 about was their range today and hanging out kind of about a buck 40 off the low right now so 
Apple, number five, 553,000 contracts. Still kind of light volume for them. Number four, back to China we go. Back to China online commerce we go to Alibaba, 104 and a quarter, up nearly nine bucks today, or about 9%. So a nice little run. Good day for China, apparently. Good day for China online retail, apparently. Uh, Number four, Baba, 662,000 contracts. Number three, everything old is new again. It's Micron, 961. They came out with some decent earnings before the bell. One of the things that kind of lifted us off the open here, Micron, 108.60 right now, up about 12.80 little over 13%. They got as high as 114.80 at one point today. So my goodness. They have come off a little over six bucks from their high today. Wow. Quite the rampage on Micron. Number three, 961,000. When's the last time we saw Micron this high, listeners? Then number two and one, you could probably guess. Number two, it's Tesla, 253.40, off about 360 or about 1.4%. So pretty much a rounding error for Tesla, 1.3 million on the tape for them. And then the big doll looking a little bit bigger today than it has in the past. 3.13 million for NVIDIA. 122.40 off a little over a buck, not even 1%. 3.13 million. That's respectable. We've seen it obviously do a lot more. But uh, nothing nothing to complain about there. We mentioned Micron yesterday after the bell for Micron. Today we have Costco after the bell. We had it censure for all you folks out there. CarMax also before the bell as well. Micron, we have luckily for you folks, because we like you, we have hot off the presses from our friends over there at Orex. We've got some earnings move results for you. Micron yesterday after the bell, 95 and three quarters is where they were going into their announcement. They were pricing in 9.1%. And again, going back to our theme of buy vol this this earnings season. Uh, Micron, another screaming example of that. They moved 17.2% in the initial blush right off of their announcement. So... That's that's quite the run right now. Let's see. They're hanging out right now. Now, if you held on to that straddle, you're not doing as well. They're at 112 and about a quarter when we ran this report. They're at 108.80 right now, so they've given up some of that. But you're still doing well. You're still outperforming uh, that straddle. CarMax, let's see, same deal. They were today before the bell. Let's see. They were pricing 74 and a half right, going into their announcement. Let's see. And they were pricing in 8.3%. And they actually early on had delivered 3.8%. Now they're delivered about 6%. So they're coming closer to in line. Interesting, because I heard some negative things early on about CarMax. But it looks like some of these numbers are actually pretty decent. So, oh, quarterly earnings missed. So they did miss, but uh, they had higher unit sales. You know, you can always parse these things a million different ways, listeners. Either way, CarMax slightly underperforming their straddle. But we'll see how that goes as the day goes on. Costco after the bell today. 26, let's see, 908.40. So Costco looking nice and rich. All right, they were pricing in 33 and a half bucks. In the past, they moved 28.92. So they're pricing in some juice here, listeners. Is Costco, does Costco merit it? I guess we'll find out. Uh, Nike coming up after the bell on the first as well. They're at 88 bucks exactly. They're pricing in less juice, 509. In the past, they've moved 730. So interesting. Less shoe vol apparently on the docket. And speaking of things that are on the docket, let's find out what the Flowmaster has on the docket because it is time for the Odd Block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for the Odd Block. everybody let's do it let's kick off a little bit of weird and wild paper you know it's going to be a good segment when the flow master is getting punny because he (laughs) says otis is going up aka otis worldwide corp you know him you love him make all the elevators you ride in day after day Uh, i'm from connecticut i remember driving past their headquarters way out there in the middle of nowhere connecticut and it kind of sticks out you know you're looking at the otis headquarters because there's pretty much nothing but farm fields around it and then there's this giant tall very thin building that they obviously use to develop and build and maybe test elevators it just kind of sticks up out of nowhere it looks very strange and that is the otis hq otis right now 10381 up about four and a third or nearly 4.3 percent so folks are liking the elevators out there today you know what on the year 
that's pretty much been the story of the year as well. It was seventy nine and a quarter a year ago, and then they up about almost twenty five bucks or nearly thirty percent. So forget AI unless they're putting AI in, in the elevators. I don't know, but uh, just elevators. Nice thirty percent right off the top. Looks like they had one pause. They rallied it up to about a par not too long ago, back in July. Then they crushed it back down to ninety one bucks. And even back uh, just about a couple of weeks ago, early September, there was trading ninety one bucks still. So it's had a nice run just in the last couple of weeks too, from ninety one bucks up to where it is right now, one hundred three eighty one. So I mean, I had a good year going back just a few weeks ago. I had gone from seventy nine to ninety one, but obviously this this next leg up is making it a much better year. Mr. Flowmaster, aside from your uh, very, very fun puns, uh, what was catching your eye out there in Otis Elevator today, sir? Uh, sure. Well, you know, they actually, we were talking, it reminds me of, there's a great ride at Disney Hollywood Studios, the uh, Tower of Terror, ah, yes. which is, uh, it's, it's, it's a good one. I've been, I've um, that one a few so, times. you know, o- Otis is not the most active name out there. Uh, I think average daily volume is barely uh, a couple thousand contracts. No, sorry, not even 600 contracts a day. And it, this one jumped out. I mean, it, it's an interesting time, right? We're at all time highs, uh, in, you know, in a, in a bunch of names. I assume that this is an all time high for the stock. I didn't go back for multi year history, but I know it's a 52 week high. Uh, somebody paid a buck twenty four to a buck thirty for a total of a thousand of the October one hundred five calls uh, this morning, around just before eleven o'clock New York time. The stock was at one hundred three thirty, uh, so stock's already up fifty cents from there. Uh, they're probably trading about a buck thirty five now, um, actually a buck sixty five. So this this buyer managed to kind of also uh, maybe cause a little bit of a vol uh, spike as well. Uh, it has earnings after uh, these expire, at least they're kind of slated for end of October. Um, they're only, right now, they're only about 1% out of the money. They expire in 22 days. This is just a, kind of a simple call buyer. To me, it looks like they're, they're kind of looking for uh, maybe some other upside catalyst. Um, it's, not a, it's not a ton of money, but... Um, uh, you know, $130,000 on a position that, that will last them two weeks. Uh, that one's worth paying paying attention to. Not an insubstantial outlay. You're right. Just and not that long of a trade either. You're right. So uh, interesting out here. And Otis, yeah, you don't think of sexy names that you want to go reach for some upside in. Otis doesn't immediately scream to mind. But looking at this chart, especially over the last few weeks, it's had a decent pop. Mr. Mr. Meatball, sir, is Otis Elevators a name that ever comes across your radar? And then what do you think about these uh, near-dated upside calls, sir? Well, you know what they say about buying, uh, buying calls in Otis Elevator, right? I'm scared to find they'll, out. You, you <laughs> buy Otis Elevator calls, they'll never let you down. Oh, okay. Not, not as bad as I <laughs> thought. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, I mean... You know, we're seeing a lot of industrial names see a lot of a lot of of strong moves of late. I mean, look what's happened in GE, 3M, even even some of the more boring names like uh, Generac, Carrier Global, um, Honeywell. Uh, so I'm I'm not surprised to see some some money taking some bets on a name like Otis. Now let's keep rolling. Let's see what other bets we can find here on the show. What the Flowmaster dug up for us. This is why we have the Flowmaster on the show, listeners. He comes. Armed with nuggets like this next one. <laughs> this one just makes me laugh, which I shouldn't be doing because <clears throat> there I go. I'm going to start coughing again. But I just love this name. It is ridiculous. Wolf Speed. <laughs> Ticker symbol Wolf. It sounds like a name for a company out of Silicon Valley. It's someone who thinks they're way too cool. Wolf Speed Inc. If you're wondering, they are an American developer and manufacturer of wide band gap semiconductors. Uh, so there you go, Let's Wolf Speed. <laughs> I like the ticker. Wolf is a good one. Uh, wolf Speed. Uh, that again, this just screams Silicon Valley to me all day long. Eight eighty-two. Uh, so Wolf Speed, kind of feeling kind of speedy today. Up nearly a buck, ninety-three cents, or nearly twelve percent. So somebody is loving some Wolf Speed uh, on the year, though. A very different story. Wow, they have been coming for Wolf Speed. So in a year when Everyone and their mother can't get enough chip stocks and chip-related names. Apparently, the market for wide band gap semiconductors is not on that list because 
they have come for this name today. It is off, or this year is off, 77%. Wow. The wolf looking no bueno. If they sold it off at the beginning of the year from about 40 bucks down to about 28, right around Halloween, 28. Then they rallied it again to the end of the year. Right at the end of the year, it was 46 and a half bucks. And then it just since then has just sold straight down. Straight down. There's been like no respite. Wow. So apparently the market for silicon carbide and gallium nitride materials and devices for power and radio frequency applications, such as transportation, power supplies, power inverters, and wireless systems, is not as strong as they thought. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, this one has all sorts of interesting things about it. And Mr. Flowmaster, aside from gifting us with just perhaps my favorite company name of all time, Wolf Speed, <laughs> it makes no, it makes zero sense, which is why it's fantastic. Uh, what, what did you find out? Don't tell me someone's buying calls in this dumpster fire, sir. And then are, are wolves particularly fast? Is that no, no? That's, none of it goes together. That's the best part. You wanted two cool names. You wanted Wolf because it sounds cool, and you wanted Speed, and you just mashed them together like some Silicon Valley random startup name generator, and that's what you got. <laughs> Wolf Scott. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, we, we, I think we've mentioned this one, and actually I, I looked in my book. I'm long a little call spread in there. I don't remember why, but I must have. Uh, was that the one that you tried to get, and then it turned out you were bidding on a – Diagonal instead of a vertical? Or that something different? No, that was a different one. Because I, I remember this name if we had talked about it before. I would you call a wolf speed, sir. That one, hard to forget. Right. So so this one jumped out at me because the um, basically the amount of calls that are trading. And it's obviously it is a pretty beaten up stock, oh, except for today. It was up you know 11%. Uh, and so calls lead put 16,000 to 2,500. Uh, so that's a you know, call to put ratio of six. Uh, which is very uh, far from the average is actually about one to one. And the focus seems to be on the nine strike. 6,000 of the October nine calls were bought uh, total on the day, uh, a couple of sweeps and the pricing was around. Uh, the biggest piece was almost 4,700 for 94 cents or for a buck uh, when they were worth about 94. So that's, you know, they, that means stocks got to get to 10 bucks for them to break even and, and the same expiration that we were just talking about 22 days out. Uh, and then there's also a little bit of tomorrow uh, nine strike call action. Now, possibly this is somebody hedging the Octobers if they, if they sold them, I don't, I'm not too sure. Uh, one day doesn't get you very far, but uh, on the September 27th, nine strike calls, we also see about 2000 of those trading uh, in the 2015 to 25 cent range okay so that's um that's pretty interesting as well i mean just looking at the chart you know it looks like the stock is pretty pretty beaten down and somebody uh you know thinks that it's just kind of a, a buying opportunity based on uh value most likely um but you know same thing like when you see you know maybe we're getting kind of back into frothy territory in, in terms of uh kind of this this heavy speculation but you know as we all know uh that doesn't mean it's going to stop anytime soon so um, you know, I might, I might kind of lean into something on this one as well. Just thinking, you know, maybe it kind of gets back towards the $10 level. That's a heck of a lot to shell out $1 for a sub $9 stock that has been, I think to put it mildly beaten up pretty aggressively this year. I don't know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Meatball, sir. First off, how awesome is that name? Wolf speed makes you want to buy this stock well, you know just for that, right? Well, you know, you 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 disparage and uh, the the speed of wolves. Now, wolves may not be as fast as cheetahs, but what they are is relentless. Do you know how a wolf hunts? A wolf runs at a consistently fast pace for miles and miles and miles until its prey runs out of steam and collapses uh, in in exhaustion, and then the wolf with ever powerful stamina tracks down its prey and devours it. So don't ever take a stab at the speed of the wolf. The wolf may not be the fastest, but the wolf is the most relentless and the wolf hunts in packs. So where there's one wolf, there are many wolves relentlessly hunting you. So before you disparage the wolf, I'll challenge you. 
I'd rather have I'd rather have uh, one cheetah trying to get at me than a, than a pack of wolves, because uh, it's one versus one with a cheetah that I'm probably bigger. If it's a wolf, I know that I'm done because it's a relentless pack. So yes, do I like the name Wolf Speed? I love the name Wolf Speed. Do I think it's a good company? No, it's a terrible company. Um, but uh, you know, this is a. I believe they're involved in crypto. Uh, they're they're pretty heavy in. Um, they do carbide materials for semiconductors. I thought they were involved in in crypto, but um, they have. Uh, they're involved in semiconductors and semiconductor. Uh, kind of the secondary semiconductors are starting to see some action here. Names like Wolf, APLD, names along those lines. A lot of action there. And so I'm not surprised to see this one seeing some call action at all. Probably going to end up winning if they if they manage it. If they just sit on them, they're going to lose. You're more optimistic. You're definitely more optimistic on on the wolf. <laughs> the wolf. That was quite well, the diatribe. Well, on the wolf. Stop me if you think I'm wrong. <laughs> you know what would you rather fight a 70 75 pound cheetah or a pack of wolves that are relentlessly well, chasing? A pack you? of well, I'll definitely take one cheetah over a pack of wolves. Yes, because you know the cheetah's got one burst in it, and that's it. Then the cheetah's done. Uh, you know, so a pack of wolves, you're right. They are a little bit more relentless. So, man, now if they had called this a pack of wolves speed, maybe maybe it would have been better. But it's just the worst. It's, we might put this out as a as a fun flash poll. Is this the best, quote unquote, name for a company ever, listeners? It might be. I don't know how we're going to to uh, compete with that. I don't think we can. So just uh, just just ruminate upon the glory that is wolf speed, listeners, as we get into our our next name slash victim here. Let's go back out to the world of ADRs. We're going back to China again, this time to VNet. Ticker symbol VNet, V-N-E-T. This is the largest private carrier neutral internet and data center service provider in China. 356 right now, up about 7 cents today, so not exactly a banger today. That's been kind of a topsy-turvy year for them. A year ago, they were trading 270, so they are up about 85, 86 cents right now, or 32% on the year. But they did come for it in between. They crushed it down to about a buck thirty, buck forty, and it hung out there for a while. It was still a buck seventy three in August, and so pretty much from August till now, it has pretty much doubled. It has gone from about a buck seventy to about three and a half bucks right now. So it's had a nice run of late. We know these with these Chinese ADRs, they they could move on a whim, on the whim of the government over there usually, and apparently this one lately has has had. It's had the magic pixie dust sprinkled upon it. So it looks like, let's go see what kind of flow we got out here. Looks like somebody is maybe thinking that magic pixie dust is going to continue because they're not playing around with, uh, with strike. They're going out to the five handles. This stock was just, like we said, a buck 73 not that long ago, and it got as low as a buck 39. Somebody bought the five calls this morning in March. They gave themselves some time, at, li at least, listeners. 5,000 times, they said, five calls, how are they? They got a dime at 50 cents, <laughs> uh, so nice and wide. But again, it's VNet, it's not Apple. They said, okay, we'll pay 46 cents 5,000 times. The stock at the time was a little bit higher, 365, so they're wearing it a little bit on the stock, but obviously not a high delta on the March 5s. Uh, they do have earnings coming up between now and March. Obviously, the next announcement is November 11th. You're probably going to get two announcements within that cycle, so maybe that adjusts your outlook on this. You get two earnings in this, listeners. Maybe you think it's worth the 46 cents then. I don't know. You're paying a lot for 46 cents for a $3.5 stock. Uh, obviously, you're paying a substantial amount compared to where it was not too long ago, a buck seventy and change. Uh, you're paying even more on a percentage basis. So uh, you got to really love it. Mr. Flowmaster, I know it's not wolf speed, but uh, you like these March 5s. They're not messing around in VNet, sir. Uh, yeah, I mean... I guess so. I don't know. It, it's a low dollar stock price. It doesn't doesn't excite me that much. I guess. I don't, I don't know. I think it, I think it probably fade those myself. So you're saying sold to you, sir? Yeah, I'll take the forty five cents. Uh, Mr. Meatball, same question for you. Are you selling these as well, or are you uh, are you buying? You gobbling up all of these delicious V net March fives? I mean. The stock is up seven cents, three dollars and fifty-six cents on a really 
really nice rip, but I generally don't like buying options that are worth more than 10% of the stock. Uh, although Wolf Speed, you know, we just talked about that. Pretty similar trade, even bigger long shot. Uh, you know, what I will warn is that two years ago in, you know, less than in less than two years, well, call it 18 months ago, this was a six and a half dollar stock. So, uh, you know, maybe it's going to get a run here again. No impressively long diatribe about VNet either and about how they, they tend to hunt in packs and all the, everything else you had going for. I, I get it. It's no wolf speed. Very few things are. <laughs> By the way, we did put it out to our audience right now. A fun little flash poll, listeners, is Wolf Speed, a.k.a. Wolf, the best name for a company ever. <laughs> we'll let you know what you folks have to say. Speaking of you folks, let's get to a little bit of that now, a little bit of the old mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, listeners, while we wait for you folks to make the ultimate determination on Wolf Speed, is it the best name in the recorded history of modern markets? Spoiler alert, the answer is yes. Uh, I've been doing this for a while. I can't recall another name that brought a smile to my face as much as Wolf Speed. <laughs> So ridiculous on every level. I love it. All right, let's go out to uh, some of what you folks had to say on some of our other questions of the week. Uh, we've been talking a lot about crypto lately for obvious reasons, but a couple of weeks ago we were asking you, hey, you know, Bitcoin itself has lived many lives over the past decade. Uh, we now have quite a bit of data under our belts, but the debate still rages. What role does Bitcoin really play in a modern portfolio? We gave you three choices and the infamous other. Is digital gold, uncorrelated asset class, just another tech stock or other. You guys had a lot of fun others like, oh, it's just a worthless lottery ticket and uh, all kinds of other fun things, which Uncle Mike would have enjoyed, I'm sure. Uh, but other only getting 7.7%. At uh, the end of the day, we had pretty much a tie, about 33% each for uncorrelated asset class and just another tech stock. And you know what? At different periods, you both are right. It's very much a weird beast. And then it's digital gold coming in at number two with 25.6%. That one kind of surprised me. I thought we kind of had uh, moved past that in the inflationary era. Bitcoin not really delivering on that front, but you never know out there. Speaking of Bitcoin, let's get to the hot thing. You know, I spent all of last week grilling people on a bunch of different topics at STA, including the prospect for will we ever see these freaking Bitcoin options that we've been waiting for since January when the SEC approved the ETFs. It's been kind of a constant refrain we have now. And even last week, everyone was still kind of hesitant and not really willing to commit. Maybe by the end of the year, if, if everything works out perfectly. And then, of course, no sooner do I turn off the lights on the Southern Studio last week and I head for the airport, then the SEC approves. They sneak out the approval on pretty much Friday night going into the weekend for options on IBIT, a.k.a. the leading Bitcoin ETF out there. So we had to ask you this week, Uncle Mike, cover your ears. We said, quite simply, asking you shall receive. After months of waiting, the SEC finally approved options trading on the Bitcoin ETF from BlackRock, a.k.a. IBIT. Do you plan to trade IBIT options when they are listed? Heck yes, hell no, or I prefer something else. Pick your poison, BitO or, you know, BitX or whatever the hell else you like. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, as our resident crypto mostest bestest lover, we'll start with you. Uh, what do you, I know what your vote is, but what do you think our audience is up to? Are they, are they jazzed to trade IBIT options, sir? I think they are. I think they're going to give them a shot. Our audience tends to tr like to try to new, try new things. I think they are going to wait a little bit to see what the liquidity situation is, but I think they like them. And in terms of a cool company name, Wolf Speed is very good, <clears throat> but I got to be honest with you. I like Eagle Fang better. Eagle Fang. That's the uh, Cobra Kai, is it not? It would be Eagle yes. Talon. It would be Eagle Talon, Mike. Come on. <laughs> no, it's Eagle Fang. Just ask Johnny Lawrence and Cobra they, Kai. But the, they don't have fangs. Fangs are in your mouth. Eagles have talons. <laughs> that may be true, but it's Eagle Fang Karate, by gosh. That's if you don't like it, it, I'll call Johnny Lawrence and he'll come see you about it. All right. If somebody does name a company Eagle Fang, that would be pretty cool, too. But if for now, Wolf Speed will have to reign supreme. And Mr. Meatball, what are your thoughts? Were you and your mentees over there in Pitland excited for the uh, the final approval of options on some of these Bitcoin ETFs 
And then B, what do you think our audience is feeling? Uh, yes, we are very excited. And the answer is, of course, yes, we're th- they're excited as uh, the audience is excited as well. Uh, Mr. Flowmash, I know you've been waiting as well. You folks over there in SIBO land certainly like to have new products to list and trade options on. Uh, were you surprised we got kind of that little stealth approval going into the close on Friday? And then B, you think our audience is as jazzed as you are, sir? Well, you know, it's it's. The, I, I actually talked to our legal team about, you know, like, because like, when are things actually going to get listed, right? We still need approval from the CFTC and OCC also has to be ready for it. I, it's still, I, I couldn't really get a good read on, was this the easier part? And is the CFTC going to be a bigger headache or what? Um, so this is kind of like a, it's an approval uh, on one side, but it doesn't mean we're going to see the products. I, I doubt we're going to see them this year. But um, you know, it's funny. I actually had a really interesting, com- interesting conversation with a crypto trader last week, uh, who basically trades the spot crypto options. You know, things like you know Deribit and places where where some U.S. firms aren't even allowed to trade. Uh, and he trades it against some of the the equities that are heavily crypto, meaning like MicroStrategy, right? Which is, you know, he said, listen, MicroStrategy is effectively a levered spot Bitcoin ETF anyway, because of the fact that their whole business now is is selling converts and using the funds to buy Bitcoins. So um, it's really kind of interesting. I do think that um, I, you know, this it's been kind of ridiculous waiting around for the this approval. When we already have it on the futures products, which are just not quite as efficient, uh, and then, like I said, you have kind of people basically. MicroStrategies is also providing that exposure, but it's a little bit dicey because people don't necessarily know what they're what they're getting into. So um, I was I was happy to see it. It's certainly a step, but I think it's going to be a little bit. Uh, it's going to be another. My guess is six months before we see any actual listings. Yeah, I was talking to the folks from RexShares on our crypto show this week, and they were pointing out they got approved to list inverse and levered options on iBit. So you can trade those. Those have been listed for a while, but you still can't trade the actual one-to-one listed options on iBit. That's kind of the weird regulatory morass we find ourselves in right now, listeners. Uh, Let's see what our audience is finding in terms of their thoughts. And as you might expect, We kind of preach to the options choir here. 73.3% of you are excited. 26.7% are in the Uncle Mike camp. You want nothing to do with it. Uh, Nobody right now saying you prefer Bitto or others, which is kind of interesting. And right now, (laughs) is Wolf Speed the best company name, best name for a company ever? Heck yes, 50% is winning. And then, um, what? I get you also. 50% each in the early voting. But I think the answer for is Wolf Speed the best name for a company, the clearly demonstrably the answer is yes, as it is time for us to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, listeners, we're powering through. My voice is surviving so far. One more show to go, then I can rest, listeners. Uh, but before I do that, let's go around the horn. Let's go out to the uncle list of mics. Mr. Uncle Mike, where do you vote in our Is Wolf Speed the Best Name for a Company Ever? Heck yes, hell no, or um what? And then B, uh, what are you keeping an eye on till the Monday show? I'll give it a heck yes for today. It is a cool name, and uh, but uh, I'm sure there's something better, but I can't think of anything right now, so I got to go with heck yes if those are my choices. Uh, In terms of what I am watching the rest of the week, wanting to see if the S&P and silver can make new all-time highs and then just seeing if bonds can take uh, a turn to the downside uh, just based upon where things are, news is out, and besides at the Longo table, the Fed isn't front and center anymore. That's what I'm watching. Nothing but endless conversations about the Fed with my family at dinner. It's a very exciting time around the dinner table in the old Longo house. Uh, Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. Is Wolf Speed the best name for a company ever? Heck yes, hell no, or um what? And then B, what are you keeping an eye on until the Monday show? I mean, there's some other great ones out there. So I don't want to give it a definitive yes, but it's pretty darn darn interesting. It's up there. In terms of combining two completely disparate and unrelated terms and matching them together in one name, they definitely take the cake. Indeed. And what are you watching for the rest of the week, sir? Uh, PCE tomorrow. 
Um, I want to kind of see how Micron before, performs, and I'm keeping on S- SMCI, which is getting slapped across the face, and whether it recovers because it basically took down the whole market with it today. Um, you know, you uh, the, the the selling pressure from kind of those 4750s were, uh, I think, kind of given given a, a lift with uh, the SMCI. Yeah, apparently uh, DOJ investigating SMCI. So that news, usually not a good thing and clearly weighing on SMCI today. By the way, coming into the end of the show here, we're pretty much hanging out close to where we were at the start of the show. Dow up about six tenths of a percent, S&P up about a quarter, NASDAQ up about a third, and the VIX cash hanging out right around 15 and a half. So pretty close to where we were at the start of the show. Mr. Flowmaster, the last word is yours. Are you as much of a fan of, of Wolf Speed as the rest of us? And then B... What are you keeping an eye on till your next appearance next Thursday? Uh, I don't know. I think Wolf Speed would be in my top five cool names for companies, but it's not. It's not number one. Uh, I'm going to be watching macro uh, things. You know, we still. You know, I think that the the market has gone into this like, oh, we're cool. Interest rates are going to be coming down. All of the next numbers are going to be good, and if they're not good, it's not going to change the course the Fed is on. The course you know they've laid out. Uh, I think that might be a little bit. Uh, complacent. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're at all time highs and um, I would kind of use this time to trim a little bit of Delta, maybe look for some, uh, you know, cheap, cheap downside plays, even if it's just kind of some vertical spreads that, uh, that, that maybe line up for, you know, 10 or 15 cents in a few um, large cap names. Uh, And then, you know, then, you know, we'll be getting into earnings. I think we have a few coming up, Costco and Nike, I think, are within the next week or so. Um, So, uh, you know, I'm I'm just I'm just looking for I I think. And then, you know, we're going to be building into the election. Right. So um, that's also going to keep people on their toes. I think, you know, to to me, VIX at 15, actually, VIX is kind of slightly up on the day. Um, So you can see, you know, we had that early burst. Everything looked amazing. And now everybody's like, "Eh, is it really amazing? Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of that. So I'd be kind of opportunistically trying to either buy a little bit of all or uh, kind of unload a little bit of Delta. All right. And that music means we are done for this episode, listeners. But before we go, let's go around the horn. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, where should folks go if they want more SIBO goodness in their lives? Just head over to cbo.com slash RMA. You can request a trial. You can see all the good stuff that we have, and we are happy to do demos and teach you to see the light. Teach you to see the light. You too can find sweet tickers like Wolf Speed listeners. Begin your journey, cbo.com slash RMA. Mr. Meatball, where should folks go if they want to do some vol learning, sir? Yeah, just uh, follow me on Twitter at Option Pit. I'm putting out useful valuable information all the time so uh come check us out optionpit.com and how goes the new sbix uh products it's been interesting it's been real choppy i the the t- the uh but uh you know i like i like the way the strategy uh the strategy's been kind of getting us out of the way of some real trouble so uh i think it's gonna long term be a pretty nice uh pretty nice way to trade there you go check them out for yourselves listeners optionpit.com the place to go to learn more and last but not least the man who can't get enough crypto in his life, Uncle Mike. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, if folks want to talk crypto with you, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, I'll tell them where to go. Go to stcharleswealth.com. I would love to have a conversation with anybody on anything, even crypto. But uh, won't be adding much to it if it actually is crypto. If you're looking for a financial advisor who's in the option space, check me out, stcharleswealth.com, or follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusaw, T-O-S-A-W. You heard the man who'll have a conversation with you about anything. So if you want to call him up and just chat about why Wolf Speed is the coolest thing you've ever heard, then by all means, uh, stcharleswealth.com, the place to go to begin your journey. Uh, that's going to do it for this journey today. But never fear, if you want more content, maybe even a little sprinkling, a little dash of Uncle Mike in your life, stay tuned. I'll be back in a little bit for this week in Futures Options. I got a feeling with Uncle Mike on board, he'll probably talk some silver. But also make it on the show, you got to tune in to find out. Then I mercifully get to rest my voice after that. Then back again tomorrow, uh, noon central for a little bit of vol viewing. And then we're back again next Monday, another episode of The Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. 
The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.